Alrighty, righty, righty, right. Alright, alright, alright. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? We're doing it again, everybody. We are doing it again. Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Here we go. Hey everybody! Hey everybody! Long time to see. What's up? How are you doing, everybody? We are doing it again. We are back live on air here on Art Marius Magic. It's so good to see you all again. I'm so excited in this crazy times. We are back on track. Can you believe it? Last time we met November 2019. I believe last week of November and what what then we had a nice Christmas and then all hell breaks loose what the fuck is going on in 2020 that's so crazy I can't believe it so what we got here yes we are ready TV crazy challengers hey yo Chris Robinson house Lee sharp everywhere I go there I am what's up man Aiden Brian Rappers here we go when you want a, a, a glass of water, a midget with a steak knife just won't dance. Okay. Okay, we got some jokers in the house. I hope you still have your furnier mat. I do. I have my furnier mat. You're gonna, you're gonna get the chance to take a close look at my furnier mat anytime soon. Uh, look at the brushed back hair. Yes, man. I, I like, you know, if it is the end of times, I, I'm, I'm doing the samurai. I'm going to look epic, you know? This is my ap ap uh, uh, apocalypse uh, outfit, you know? Nice and shiny with a nice straight mustache, you know? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> awesome, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let me turn the sunglasses uh, off here. Woohoo! All right. All right. I've been so excited. I've been turning my whole um. I've been turning my whole uh, uh, house into um a uh, a rock and roll. You know, a, a rock a roll fame of all backstage area. You know, <laughs> prepping myself for the for the for the big show tonight. So great you guys all tune in colin uh, gross camp likes uh, the way i look thank you so much thank you so much now listen up folks listen up we are going to hit it hard this year we are going to walk through expert card technique close-up table magic by hugard and Bruet. and today in today's session we go i'm going to give you an introduction and we're going to um uh, lay out the roadmap for for the coming sessions because we will not do it the way we did it last year we're not going to do it i'm just doing this shit again i'm sorry we're doing we're not going to do it like we did it with the royal road to card magic in the royal road to card magic last year we walked chapter by chapter following basically the didactic concept of the authors john hugart and frederick Bruy. um we will not do this with expert car technique. We will uh, 
kind of cherry pick. And by doing so, we're going to reflect on the build of the book. We're going to talk about this today because this is a little different than the Royal Road to Card Magic. It has um, been published before the Royal Road to Card Magic. Um, I believe 10 years before. I, where's Royal Road to Card Magic here right now? I believe the Royal Road was published in 51, na, uh, 1951. And Expert Card Technique was first, first, first published in, uh, in 1940, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. So there is... Um, uh, 1951 was the uh, Royal Road to Card Magic first, pub uh, uh, first published. Um, so there is 11 years in between, and that is uh, a lot of time. That is a lot of time. And um, the build of this book here is very different from um, the Royal Road to Card Magic. So we will cherry pick. And we will still, however, dive deep into the material. It, this book is so full of um, valuable material. Um, we're going to um, uh, blow our minds. This is going to blow our minds, probably. I'm super excited doing this. I'm so excited doing this, and I would be lying if I say that I've been um, that I've been um, through with the book. That that's just insane. Um, so, in reference to what we did last year, we will um, hopefully, um, with um, more understanding, a little more sophisticated, and with more self-esteem. Um, we will um, look at similar topics like the double lift, the pass, false shuffling, false cuttings. But of course, also, we're going to read in between the lines and we're going to find the, um, the pearls in the book, some of them at least. The sessions this year are going to be shorter than last year. Last year, we did extremely long sessions, um, about two hours, even more, three hours. L longest session was four hours. Um, we're going to keep it much shorter. And the challenge is, uh, is to uh, focus on the um, most important aspects of w whatever we're going to work on each session in a time period of 45 to 60 minutes. And it's going to be a challenge, right? Because the year already started with this craziness, with this complete madness, with this pandemic, um, countries shutting down, shops are closed, businesses are going to the shitters, people dying, you know? It's going to be a challenge to focus on the cards and on the material. And this is what we're gonna try, this is what I'm gonna try. Of course, there might be in between we might, you know, relax a little bit and reflect on what's happening. But the main cause here, the objective, is to become better magicians, be better card magicians, deepening our understanding of this fascinating art form. And I'm super excited you are all tuning in. That's freaking epic. Awesome. Currently, we, currently we got 18 folks watching. Everybody new to the show, you're very welcome. Everybody tuning in also from last year. It's a blast. It's amazing. I'm super excited. I hope audio and video quality is up to its standards so that you can enjoy the ride. As I used to say, make it quality, quality times for yourselves, kiddos. Get a deck of cards out and start practicing whatever it is you're doing right now. This is your 45 minutes, this is your 60 minutes of quality, quality time. Listen to Uncle Admarius saying only wise things. But you know what I'm always saying? Do not take what I'm um, sharing with you here as final uh, solutions, as the last words of wisdom or something. I'm still, or I'm also knee deep in my learning process, in my studies of the art form. So take this as my take. Take this as an input, an impulse for your own learning process, for your own thought process. And that is the idea while you're practicing. You're very welcome. Before we get started, before we, I talk a little bit here about the uh, uh, expert card technique, about the publication. Thank you so much, all my 
Patreons, all my odd maniacs, all the crazy odd maniacs out there. Right now it's nine folks um, bringing together, I don't know, 36 rocks or something. Your support is a very appreciated. Thank you so much without you. This wouldn't be happening without you guys. And I say it all the time, but it's just true. Um, you make it happen. Thank you so much. Everybody new to the show, there are links, related links in the info cards in the upper uh, right corner on your screen as well as uh, in the info box. Before I forget it, I want to give a shout out to um, a guy which uh, who I um, uh, just found on Facebook. This is the tweet here. Let me show you this. Um, uh, he writes this. Uh, he's called uh, Sila. Bogdan, I don't know if you know the guys, if you know him, I, I, I just uh, I randomly uh, stumbled upon his uh, post on Facebook and he writes day two of whatever this is I'm doing, Magic Circle Show, um, 60 minutes upload, uh, no likes, uh, <laughs> no dislikes, uh, no views, uh, with 390 subscribers. Um, so I went to uh, to the to the video on YouTube, watched it, uh, uh, enjoyed it, uh, clicked like, and I'm giving the guy a shout out here right now because this is of course a crisis for all the performance artists out there, you know, because everything's shut down. There's no gatherings, there are no shows, there is n nothing, nada. All the jugglers, um, clowns, artists, magicians, they are all out of of business, <laughs> and it's uh, it's terrible. It's um, terrible. Terrifying, and probably uh, some of them now will, you know, try to um, to find a solution. You know, maybe going online. And I think we should um, warmly welcome them and um, uh, greet them and help them uh, getting started on the social media, especially the odd farts. You know, <laughs> uh, righty right. So that's what I wanted to share. Share. I'm trying to give a, a shout out here to uh, a random dude um, every session. Just because it's possible. What do you think about that? So let me let me see what's up in the uh, comments before we get started here. Um, the hair is above standard. I agree. It is probably um, uh, the most um, uh, the, the, the the most cultivated haircut I have I have had for the longest time, and I really I I really um, regret that I cannot visit my mother right now because of the quarantine. My mother is in the quarantine zone. I'm in the, everybody's in the, the world is a freaking quarantine zone. I cannot visit my mother to um, have myself being pet, to pet that my buddy, mother pets me and say, that's your very, you look very lovely, son. <laughs> Love to clean and uh, cleaned up look now. Let's get on with it. Um, I just started and uh, recently finally feel comfortable with, uh, with the, in the hand shuffle. All right, on my last break at work. Greetings for Norbert Kusak. M greetings. We'll be listening and working, rewatching and practicing after work. Fair enough. Sam here, Aiden, uh, uh, Rob, and cool French shows. Okay, guys, you're greeting each other. And um, Peter uh, Lysogorski says, get, get on with it. Get on with it. You're so right. Time's running. Time is running. Now. When we now look into the introduction oh no if we took if you look in the how you say this here the, not the turntable the, the table of content um we will find we will find an incredible incredible material um we have uh, part one slides we have double lifts double turnover secret lifts we have false deals the sl the side slip the pass we have palming we have false shuffles false cuts changes uh grimps peaks glimpses the jogs, reverses, sundry slides, specific slides, speci here, there, there's the camera, specific slides. We have um, um, more palming, we have more shuffling, perfect faro shuffling, then we have a section on flourishes, then we have a separate section on techniques. What the heck is that separation here between slides and techniques? And then we have tricks with cards, we have a uh, Different effects, rising card, selected tricks, birds of a feather, routines. We have one hand card magic, the ambitious card, <coughs> using doubles and triples, discoveries, again an effect, mental discoveries. We have tricks with re reverses, spelling tricks, double faced cards, stranger card trick, self working trick, miscellany, some 
special flourishy routines probably uh, then we have a chapter on misdirecting and presentation misdirection and presentation so this book is loaded it is loaded but as you can see from the table of content from the uh, content here it is not in the least ordered like the royal road to card magic there is so much more in it um royal road to card magic almost um appears thin compared to this so first question uh, what kind of book is this what, what, what are we dealing with here now when we read the introductions uh, we soon realize um, basically this is a handbook for magicians it is a um, collection of the latest um, material the state of the art so to say in the 40s and we're going to read now into the introduction and then we will find that there has had been a huge a huge how you say shift or development um, probably over the a period of um, 60 years from the late 19th century 1880 um, to 1940 at a point where Hugarden Brouet decided to basically collect all the material of the top colleagues at work to that time so we're talking from our point of view 80 years back of the publication and even later so 100 to 120 years back of the history of card magic of conjuring with cards expert card technique and the funky thing about it is a lot of the material here if not most of it is still relevant up today however if you tackle this um, lecture uh, with the with the right approach so you gotta know in a certain way what you're doing to extract the value out of it otherwise this turns into a um, mind-blowing overload of information you simply cannot process you simply cannot turn into useful material so this is ex <coughs> this is far away from being a lecture for beginners even advanced um, players in the game uh, will find quite a challenges uh, here um, this is basically um, top-notch material fr from top-notch players for top-notch players now we're going to make this useful for us by making very smart and selective choices and um, keeping keeping a low profile right I'm super excited doing this this year with you guys And we have crazy challenges adding some very uh, valuable information here right now there's also the lost chapters written by Di Vernon which were only printed on the third edition of the book very very interesting when we didn't notice for, for example when we when we read the foreword <coughs> I'm sorry I'm having I'm having a cough <coughs> but this is not it's not what you think it is right it is um really a dry uh throat i'm drinking tea all the time <clears throat> kind of embarrassing you know <laughs> <clears throat> flying is in the house saying hi otmero it's nice to see a live stream back again flying we nice seeing you again awesome you're tuning in welcome to the show welcome to the first session of the expert card technique uh, live session here I'm not I'm not scaring you I'm just um, I'm just uh, trying to re realistic approach here we're getting there everything easy uh, but you will you know I will not be working this in a way in the right road to card magic you know with a little cocky approach going uh, or attitude going like okay, I show you I show you kittens how to do this um, 
a lot of the things here even in the first chapter the next session is going to be about uh, double lift um, double turnovers there's a lot of it I um, dismiss from the very beginning I don't need it but I, still there's a lot of very important information uh, I, I can I, I could distract uh, uh, from it for my personal stand for my own goals um, I gonna I gonna I gonna fill you up uh, in on this and and you're gonna f just follow this thought process and maybe this helps you out maybe not you know this is what it's all about um, crazy challenges once again thank you for this uh, um, uh, lost chapters by die burn um, um, comment if you guys have anything in addition here uh, you think is valuable or important feel free to uh, hit me up in the comments feel free to um write this down in, in the comments later for people to follow up uh, because because uh we got we are going to be everywhere if we keep on doing this for example let me show you this um i was uh doing a little um research here on uh, uh Hugard and freddy bray uh, uh, taking a look maybe at the authors talking a little bit about, about the authors <clears throat> And I found this website here. It's called Celebs Aces, and this is here like I, I kind of a bio, uh, bi biographical information about uh, Jean Hugard, and then you got his childhood, and there's information, education, and then some weird associations. And then I scroll down, and look what's happening. <laughs> My face. <laughs> well, that's that's the power of the internet. You know, this is these. Uh, search term connections of um, pages that um, just uh, suck data from everywhere and when the search term or the keywords they fit something like that happens so anyway um, here here we are you know at the first session just like this one last year on the railroad to card magic but yeah, dip this goes away um, so um, the authors wish to express their appreciation of the friendly spirit in which many of the tricks and slides printed in this book were contributed and now we got some name dropping here um, i don't know all of these names but um, i know they are all big players uh, we got uh or used to be uh, names in the field bert Al alatron theo anemann cliff green jared l kaufman harold layard jack mcmillan jack Merlin, paul rossini di vernon and louis Signon. Uh, they are particularly in, 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 indebted to Charles Miller. They are, so the authors who got him, I'm talking in third person about themselves. Charles Miller, who has been uh, uh, k uh, kind of a, um, uh, a leading, leading um, uh, inspiration uh, with a lot of uh, material of, of Miller going into this book. Who generously and freely gave uh, of his favorite methods that this book might uh, be that which the authors can only hope it will be a comprehensive and lucid source book of expert car technique and that it is and it is uh, it uh, since its publication up until today also they write that they are with the um, publisher uh, Carl W. Jones, in the hopes um, that uh, expert card technique will uh, become a standard book of magic. Which it did. It became a standard book of magic. That's right. That's Ekaterina's deck. It is, uh, it's the Fox deck. I, I, have, I just uploaded an unboxing video, last upload here on the channel. Um, so... I just want to read. I want to read to you guys the um, the um, uh, the dedication because I thought the dedication was so funny. Let me let me let me read this out because it's so weird. This book is dedicated to all who love the art of conjuring with cards, to the most skillful, adept, as well as the youth yet to explore the heady mysteries of the art, to the man who comprehends the abracadabrish nomenclature of the craft, as well as to those. To whom such knowledge offers an open season to a new and exciting world. To the experienced in guileful trickery. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Uh, really weird words. Never learned that in school. Guileful trickery and to, to the tyros still experiencing the intoxicating excitement of thumbing through the textbooks of the craft. 
to the rich and poor, wise and foolish, young and old, to all the uh, present generation of card controllers, as well as the generations to come in the sincere hope that they might find in its pages a knowledge which will enable them to add to the prestige and the dignity of the art of conjuring with cards. Wow! Is the, are, they talking, are, you talk, are you talking to me? Are they talking to us? Are we, are we going to do this? Are, we are going to add prestige and dignity to the art of conjuring with cards. That's a nice, that's a nice, that's a nice uh, um, objective here. I'm with, the, I'm with this. I love it. <clears throat> so, 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 so. This book is just a smasher. It is a smasher, I'm telling you. So, um, very shortly to the authors. We got Frederick Bray, and we're not diving deep into the authors. You can uh, do your own research. I just, you know, scratching the surface here with um, Wikipedia. Um, let me uh, up this for you. Frederick Bray, uh, March 1906 to July 1962, was an American journalist notable for his contribution to the field of card magic. He was a semi professional magician specializing in card magic, of which he was a master. Barreau co-authored several books with Jean Hugard, including Expert Card Technique and Royal Road to Card Magic. As Bro and Hugard lived on opposite sides of the Ameri of uh, the America, they wrote their books via correspondence. In the 1940s, Frederick Brewer edited uh, a children's page called Ons Alice Page of That's not interesting. He contributed to many magazines. Right, so he was a professional uh, writer. Um, in, uh, in in first regards, um, and I believe this is uh, uh, this is notable. Um, this this book, okay, this is uh, at least for my taste, uh, ancient English or a little uh, dusty English. Um, sounds nice though. I think uh, it's pretty cool. But I'm not a native uh, speaker, so I don't really I don't really get the feel of the language. I don't really know how to um, how to be um, how to feel about it. <laughs> But the writing is excellent. Uh, that I know for sure. And also the uh, the writing in Royal Road to Card Magic. I felt it it's really easy to read and easy to understand. And um, it's really nicely worded, uh, nicely put, and really, really rich. Um, it is definitely worth uh, reading it. By the way, <coughs> I've got um, uh, an affiliated link in the info box in case you don't have the book uh, for UK, US and Germany. Um, and I would really appreciate it if you uh, tunnel through this link in case you wanna sh go shopping on Amazon. Uh, supporting the channel on this very easy way, getting this really nice book. By the way, this is um, uh, the, the uh, uh, paperback version by Dover, from Dover uh, Publications, who specialized on um, public domain publications. This is a public domain. Um, and the print, the, the, the Dover print is a really high quality for really, really good price. Um, you get this uh, extremely cheap if you if you uh, don't care buying a used version, uh, five bucks or something, you can get this thing and this is really rich, right? Crazy Challenger writes, uh, there's a little bit of debate regarding the author since it is uh, rumored that uh, Frederick Bruce stole some of the stuff in the book from people who published things in his magazine. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, that's an interesting thought. M might be, um, might not be. There is an as aspect here of um, gathering material um, to kind of fixate, fixate it, to, 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 um, um, to preserve it in time. And to kind of, you know, hold um, hold on for a moment in the fast evolution and fast flow of the art form. Um, and my headphones are too loud right now, so I gotta turn this uh, gotta turn this down here. Excuse me. And I mean, we are in the, in a in a similar situation, we're gonna we're gonna uh, dive deeper into this when when we're gonna when I go through the introduction here. Actually, um, it 
copyright is a very, very uh, delicate matter. And um, there are things that are really, really hard to copyright. Um, and others are really, really easy to copyright. And copyright is very often a matter of the one who is in a more powerful position. Uh, more, uh, usually financially uh, being able to get uh, the better lawyers and the copyright we are dealing with today and we're having all these troubles here on YouTube also it is a um, it is an um, uh, out of date copy it's an out of date copyright which is which is not working anymore with the way information flows with the technolo technology we are using here today um, as a matter of fact i just saw a video about this yesterday on youtube um, and maybe you should watch this i'm going to show you this where this is because it is um, a very um important watch <coughs> so let me go I'm, I'm coughing here this is ridiculous so we got 20 20 um one folks watching uh, b -b -b you're very welcome. I want to I want to share this video with you guys right now. By the way, I'm using the web browser Brave, and you can see how how fast this thing is performing. You need to know right now I am streaming wireless with Wi-Fi. Um, here, all this data is going out constantly, music, video, and this is high quality, and still this browser is is, is killing it. I'm excited. It's called the Brace Browser. It comes with an inbuilt ad blocker, inbuilt uh, um, firewall. It comes with a crypto wallet. It is the answer to the problems we have with this uh, uh, data collecting uh, giants from Silicon Valley. You can find a download link in the info box. You got to try this out. It is amazing. I'm using this browser now for almost uh, for over one year and it's brilliant. So I want to go to my um, I just uploaded the wrong thing. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, uh, 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 I get, gotta go to my YouTube actually. So, um, and then I want to go to 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 library, right? They change your YouTube all the time. I don't know what this is. So, um, this is watch later. This is history. I need to see the history. So this is my browsing history, nothing unusual here. So where is this video? I can't believe I watched this yesterday night. That, uh, okay, I'm not finding it. But I, no, I want to find it now, it can't be. There it is. Um, it is YouTube's copyright system is not broken. The world is by uh, Tom Scott. Probably you you should know you you know Tom Scott. He's a 2.2 million subscriber YouTuber who's doing absolutely great educational content on super interesting topics. If you, if you don't know Tom Scott yet, um, you need to check this guy out. These videos are a, a pleasure to watch. Are always extremely well produced and so informative. And um, he's a clever he's a clever bastard. He's a really smart guy. Um, um, this is you, really YouTube at its uh, top notch. This you can, hardly can do this better, and this is a really valuable watch if you're interested in a copyright thing. Anyways, um, let me put it like this: everybody who ended up in the book will survive. Survived already 120, 120 years, and and will probably survive even longer. Besides, just. Um, the extreme um, nerd level of people, you know, um, digging through magazines uh, that that have been published ages ago. No, nobody d does this except for extremely um, nerdy guys who are really ex interested in in the history of magic on a very detailed level. Um, and from today's standard. Magic has shifted so rapidly with this new technology we are using, with video, with streaming, with social media platforms. Um, everybody got one of those. 60% of the views come on those. People are used to consume media 
on a much higher frequency than they're used to. And um, a whole generation of magicians is working in a complete new way. And um, this book really made a, you know, a, a snapshot 100 years ago. Lucky us. <laughs> Lucky these guys um, had the um, um, competence, the passion, and the abilities to um, put this book in motion. Because it's really hard, a lot of work to, to write something like this, to publish something like this. Um, it's, it's still today. And, um, and lucky us to be blessed with such a source. Um, really excited about it. So now the music has ceased and I can't live without music in the background. And this is YouTube again telling me that I have to reclick this. So let's see what's happening. We got um, 20, 20 <coughs> oh man, this Corona. <coughs> I have, I don't have it. I really don't have it. I feel perfectly fine. It's just, it's just a dry, I know it. I, I had the paranoia. I was paranoid already. As a matter of fact, I went to the, to the um, pharmacy and bought myself one of those. And I can prove it to you right now if you want to. I am okay. Okay, don't, don't worry. I just got a cough. So what do you got? Um, my wife asked how long our live stream will uh, last today. Any idea, Maris? Yeah, I was planning to keep this short. 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Now it's uh, 32 minutes. Probably we're going to go for 60 minutes. Max, but I want to keep it like that. <coughs> just because last year... I almost ruined my channel because I was doing two, uh, two uh, long live streams. It was great getting connected with you guys. Uh, but um, the, uh, the average percentage view, views, um, view time, average percentage views went down to a point where the algorithm kind of got triggered and then my suggestions went to the shitters. You might remember me ranting about this. It was, it was terrifying. And my channel has not discovered ever since, basically. I'm still, um, I have, I, last year, I, I, I um, fell back to the beginning of 2018 and I'm still there. Uh, anyways. Live fever test, let's see. Okay, okay. <coughs> Gotta do this. Okay. Okay, and now when I'm, I'm getting so paranoid when I'm having a fever right now. Here, yeah, live test. This is retarded. Thirty-seven point one. Thirty-seven point one. That's not a fever. That's just excitement. Because I'm, I'm meeting all my friends. Are you satisfied now? <clears throat> but it's so, it's so it's so stupid. It's so stupid actually. I know. Um, to get in the live stream and then having this. Um, a straight throat and then um, being cuff cuffing all the time in this situation right now. I'm, I'm not doing this on purpose. It's just like crazy. So let's go back here to um, to the book. Now I'm going to, I just, what's happening here right now is I'm going to read and I'm going to, I'm going to share my thoughts with you and you, you're practicing cards, right? This is the introduction of the live stream. You, I, I have your comments here in front of me. So if you um, want to interact, just write something. I, I, um, I prob if I'm not answering everything, don't you panic. I still love you. It's just, you know, um, multitasking. Got this beautiful deck of cards here. Um, 
and I'm using a beautiful card here from the card from the from the Fox deck by Ekaterina. In um <clears throat> In no other branch of the art of conjuring has such progress been made as in sleight of hand with cards. Beginning with a half the, with the half dozen basic slides known to the magician of a hundred years ago, there have slowly been evolved new methods of performing these slides. And new slides been evolved new methods of performing the slides and new slides the purpose of which is to achieve results never dreamed of by the earliest experts. As a listener's first sentence, I mean, like, it sounds like they're talking about today. I mean, just just take just take from the 2000s. What happened with card magic? I mean, uh, uh, this, for example, Dan and Dave's tri 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 trilogy, right? And uh, they've been performing um, their thing. They were teens before they became uh, super successful entrepreneurs. And they were, like, working professionals, old farts, like, um, like uh, uh, yeah, I know, it's a really but full throttle professionals the, the, the people who made a living uh, performing with selling dvds lectures and books they were standing there and looking at these teenagers uh doing their thing and the, you could see the jaws drop because ne you've never seen something like this. just the other day i've seen and i've seen a new color change and it was like mind blowing it's like what the freak is going on how is this even possible i don't know something really really and you know, just you can just imagine how how difficult this is. And I believe I just Chris Ramsey just the other day uploaded it's one of his late, late, latest uploads. Um, uh, very refreshing after all this uh, uh, children riddle stuff he did. Um, um, uh, uh, color change also very visual, very um, very um, very strong visual effect very difficult very sophisticated sleight of hand this is micro timing micro muscle memory this is extremely angle sensitive stuff this is um um highly um specialized craft specialized crafted um uh effects for certain for very specific use cases um this this is this, this happened last 20 years right um at the same time david blaine Right, it was somewhere. It, was it? In, I, I don't have the numbers in my head. The early nineties, something with this uh, street magic revolution, um, shifted the perspective of the camera. Um, camera work became very um, um, became, got a new drive. Magic, magic was boosted. Magic uh, had a, revo uh, um, a revolution on television. Um, and look where we are now today. The market is blooming like never before. There's so many different formats. It's crazy and. The, 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 the level of sleight of hand out there is intense. It's really intense, and um, uh, you you hardly keep up. And I believe you do, you don't need to. And we're going to talk about this here because there are very different styles of um, performing magic. And with card magic, um, there's a specific uh, style. This book is focusing on. This is a style I also prefer, and I've dedicated my my work for. Um, Anyways, the progress of the art is uh, milestone by the great conjuring uh, classic. So, uh, Secrets of Conjuring and Magic, uh, Sack, Slide of Fant, The Great Hoffman Trinity, Modern Magic, More Magic, Later Magic, and Lang Niels, The Modern Conjurer. These were supplemented at the turn of the century by expert at the card table and the art of magic. Two fine books which recorded the new improvements in the art, the former of which even today will be found in the library of every card conjurer. Perhaps no other book in all the list of conjuring books has been so uh, uh, widely read, so affectionate. Affectionately regarded. We're talking expert at expert at the card table, right? Um, we're, now we're talking here at the at the, at the edge of the century. I, I believe expert at the card table was published in 1994, right? For the three decades, these books were the textbook for uh, the aspiring card conjurer. No new and important titles making their uh, uh, appearance. Then, during the middle 30s, the literature of magic was enriched by such well with uh, treaties as Greater Magic by John Norton Hilliard, the end. Encyclopedia of card tricks edited by John Hugard, card manipulation and more card manipulation by Hugard. And the publications of Theo Anuman, Laurie Ireland and Ralph Hall. Once again, it became apparent that the art of conjuring is not static, that it is constantly moving forward in an area in which sleight of hand with cards has reached its greatest development with new refinements, new techniques and new uh, subterfuges, displacing the older artifices. 
It has become apparent that there is a need for a book which would exclusively record the changes which have taken place in card manipulation since publication of the Downs and the Erdness books. And the present volume has been written to fill that need. Now, this is absolutely important to, to, to grasp at this point um, in time because um, we are dealing here with a recording in time with a kind of, um, you know, um, um, record of the changes that happened in this period, 30-year period. Um, and this, that, that, that's why it is like kind of just a collection of all those things, of very spe specific techniques, very specific slides, very defined um, routines um, that, have, that have been created by people who have already been master magicians. That means the material in this book is unique are unique adaptations by high profile performers 100 years ago so we have to translate we have to be aware about this in order to to really learn from the material in the sense of being able to tr transform it uh, into our times into the times we are uh, dealing with uh, and this is exciting to me. This is really exciting uh, to, to, to tackle this uh, lecture um, with, this, um, with this drive. And I hope you are um, in on it with me here. The dissemination of knowledge almost invariably results in an increase in knowledge. And this is as true of conjuring as it is of science. The dissemination, I have to find the right German word for it, so let me look this up um, so that I can, um, that I'm really saying what I'm meaning here. Dissemination. Yes, the dissemination of knowledge almost invariably results in an increase in knowledge. So this is an aspect which I want to um, st st put myself behind and I, I hope you follow me on with, uh, follow this lead here because in a way we are following this path here we are living in a time where the information and knowledge can be, can be and is widely shared and this is critical in a certain way that it's really sometimes hard to protect your material uh, which is needed for a certain amount of time so that the artist uh, gets the revenue he deserves for his work um, at the same time however the collective knowledge grows exponentially when information are shared and when people like you and me come together and um, uh, discussing or analyzing and studying and um, reading, lecturing, um, material like this. And in this sense, this is kind of a scientific approach. Um, and it should be, because we as magicians, uh, we are dealing with a very complex art form, which um, requires a, a huge variety of skill levels, you know, and our uh, dexterity is just one of them, right? It is nothing than it's, it's nothing less than fascinating to perceive how a trick or slide is improved by the many intelligences which leave their mark upon it, each mind shaping and improving the original concept. Always there is one goal, simplicity, which means ease of execution and increased deceptiveness. So I have to repeat this because this is absolutely crucial. It's uh, crazy how important this is. Always there is one goal, simplicity which means ease of execution and increased decept uh, and increased deceptive deceptiveness deceptiveness simplicity ease of execution increase of deceptiveness 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 is the word is that insane this simplicity is not easily achieved although in retro perspective a simple idea always seems absurdly easy of an, uh, attainment if the slides of today are nearing perfection, it should be remembered that this is only because of the thought of the preceding generations of magicians which pass along their efforts 
for the good of the fraternity, right? So, like in any field of magic, we are standing on the shoulder of giants. And in that sense, nothing of what we do is original. It's all grounded and rooted in a long tradition, in a long evolutionary process, evolution of the art form. And it is our challenge, if we want to become masters, to contribute to this development, to this movement, right? So as you can see from the very beginning here, this shit is much more crisp than Royal Road to Card Magic, which is just like, this is how you get started. And this is like, yeah, we're in the middle of a, a, a fraternity of uh, magician wizards, right? <laughs> it's a little different, it's a very a different take here. So this is obviously not written out. It's addressed for everybody at, at the, uh, at the um, preface here, or what we say at the um, dedication. <clears throat> but that's just a sales pitch, you know? Um, <laughs> Uh, this is for people who know their place at the card table, right? And so it's super exciting to really dive into the material, don't you think so? I'm super excited about it. Oh shit, why is the music so loud? I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um... But very seriously, you compare the English language better than many native speakers. I, uh, pff, I, you know, this is, there is a lot of um, tongue breakers in it. Re <laughs> and really words, but words I, I really like. This, these are words um, with, the, with this German accent. This uh, um, makes you sound very sophisticated. So, so of course, always make it, a, make it quality, quality time. You know, this is like uh, distracting. I mean, who reads a book? Who reads a book hundred years ago, uh, like it's a um, specific um, book on, um, on any kind of craft form? This is, this is already, we are already entering here nerd level um, expert. This is uh, our expert nerd level already, right? This is, <laughs> this is not kindergarten. This is not uh, your, um, uh, this, it's, this, this is not a pro seminar, yeah? This is a uh, Hauptstudio. <laughs> So I just keep on and see how far I come. I added. In the following pages will be found the simplest methods of performing the slides which play a part in the performance of feats with cards, as well as a number of tricks which have been found to be effective and entertaining. This is not really true. There are some slides in this book which are absolutely crazy, uh, very difficult, and there's a lot of stuff also in there where I would say, mm, why would you, why would you put the effort in there? That's just somebody who developed something for for himself. And we got to say himself because I, b I believe there are no women involved here. That, that's back in the days. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to gender around here. Um, uh, this is a boys playground. Um, hopefully this is something that's going to change in the future, you know, uh, f uh, female power in a, in a magic community. Um, it's so amazing. You know, it's, uh, we, we, uh, the boys saw the girls in a half long enough, right? Time for a change there. But that's a different topic. Anyways. Um, the slides read from improved methods of performing the elementary and basic pr procedures such as the pass, the change, the glide, the grims, the palms, to the more pretentious and little known methods of gambling fraternity, including the false seed shuffles and cuts and the perfect shuffle. And I really want to um, lay a little bit of emphasis here also uh, w without my eyes already on expert at the card table. Um, there are um, these basic and fundamental false shuffling techniques um, which and when you know you, you if you follow me along my channel this is what I'm saying all the time this stuff is just crucial if if you get this right from scratch um, the, this is the, the door opens the gates open and you can do whatever you want if you just spend this couple of years training yourself to get all these nasty false shuffles down. Everything else is just like, it's just a question, you know, you just, everything else is like, what effect do I want to perform? But then you put the effects into an order, then you think about a nice narrative, and then you just uh, work out um, 
uh, which uh, which slides you, what method the methods you uh, you you uh, you're gonna use. That's that's how you're working. Then it's like you don't really care. You're not learning tricks. I mean, the next super easy trick or this is a nice trick. You don't learn tricks anymore. You just you you, you design your own performances to the to the needs you you have, and then this is where where you start mastering the art. Um. The tricks include easy and surprising self-working feats as well as the, uh, th those dependent upon skill. All of these have been chosen with uh, but one criterion in mind. They must be entertaining and mystifying to those who witness them. Old school, that's just where we, uh, where we are. This is about entertaining an audience and not um, showing off and jerking off with your magic buddies. buddies. What am I doing here? The camera's off. So um, I put the music down. I hope the music is... Uh, I'm so sorry. I just didn't see that. I just ruined it. I hope not for too many. Um, so the music is now down a little bit and we're good. Um, as much as anything else, this book champions a style, and this is now the most important thing, and then we're almost done here for today. Of card conjoin the card expert commands the respect and the admiration of those who watch him because apparently he does not manipulate the cards his every effort is centered on presenting his feats with a minimum of handing the cards now you must understand for, for today's standards this minimalistic approach um, seems to be outdated but it's not and this is something very, very crucial to understand for whatever you do if, if we proceed on this level we are trying to achieve here. Every form of camera work, may it be on television, may it be um, for um, shooting um, crisp uh, Instagram or whatever, uh, YouTube or uh, social media clips or promo trailers, it is something fundamentally different from performing for a live audience. You do not present one flashy effect after another in front of a live audience. You do not show off skills in front of a live audience. You communicate with a live audience. You tell a story in front of a live audience. You use the effects only to move the social interaction forward to create overall an amusing and entertaining experience which is highly interactive with your audience the means do not matter as a matter of fact the means should be as simple as possible you should work you should make your life as easy as possible everything else is showing off jerking off for magicians as magicians magic uh, uh, uninteresting doesn't really matter nobody nobody who has become in any form known and famous who enjoys its, this art form and it has not become a how you say this a um, bitter dick um, <laughs> because his life achievements have not been appreciated enough uh, because you missed out on this most important thing now the other thing is there is this modern uh, or uh, let me put it like this this modern magic this cardistry style or cardistry influenced magic so i'm talking about this amazing flashy color changes huge spring the anaconda whatever you know all these things you know these music clip like compilations of effects it has its right it has its audience it is however designed and the people who work with it it's designed for the medium we are communicating with right now here over with right now so it is a very different approach and the things you study the things you learn the slides you master in order to do that they are designed for the specific task and most of the material you see in this most flashy things do not work standalone in the real world you d you will not see a performer actually really perform an anaconda on a stage because simply because the risk is just too high that the thing blows off there might be a bold guy you know i've seen Dave, david plain that's a lot of p p things on telly where you say well that was freaking bold this could just backfire and he he he, he got busted several times that's the decision of the performer but you know what i'm saying <coughs> and even if you manage to create 
this absolutely perfect flow of, of, of cardistry move, color changes, anaconda, everything you can do. And you throw the card around your neck and, and stuff that thing. It is shit boring in real life when people look at it. You just like, there's just this one guy who goes, wow. <laughs> and then everybody else is, it's just, uh, and I'm not saying it's bad. And I'm not saying it's juggling with cards and dismissing it because of that. I'm just saying it's a different purpose. And this book is not about it. This book is about practicing skills, learning skills that are meant not to be visible at all. They are not meant to appear in the mind of anybody at no circumstance. In the best case scenario, the, you, the conjurer does not touch the deck at all. That is the idea, right? So and you will practice your ass off for some of these techniques. And um, even for what I call basic techniques, shuffling, cutting, you will practice a long time to really master them, to get them subconsciously working in your hands so that you will never have to worry about catching a pinky break ever and catching a double. You will have that, you know, because that's what, what you need to do. It's like playing, you can't perform free jazz on stage everywhere if you can't, if you can't do the scales. You can't do that then, you know? It's as easy as it is. So th those are different things. This book ain't got nothing to do with it. So forget about it. Um, you got to go somewhere else if you are looking for um, these compilation things for um, for your um, social media career, right? Yeah, I don't know. Start with Dan and Dave's trilogy, and you're 20, 20 years. Well, when then did when did it come out? Like two thousand or whatever. You you twenty years back, and the shit the the kids perform today, it's crazy. It's mind boggling. It's really sometimes it's annoying. I understand the old fans. There are people getting away for 40 years in their lifetime with an MC count, a shitty double lift, and um, the overhand shuffle. That's all they do. They got one coin routine or two coin routines. Um, then there are some thumb tips, some stupid, depending on their age, usually racist or sex, sex, sexist jokes. And that's what they're doing for 40 years. It worked. And, they're, and when they perform a pass, if you, if you put a camera on them, everybody goes like, what the fuck is that? That's not, that, that's, that's, uh, it works in the real world. You know, and now a guy like this looking at what the kids are doing today. This is crazy. <laughs> it's great. I love it. It's amazing. But it's a different thing. Just that you know. I got to say the classic magic is always hip. Cartridge is boring. Yes. Well, hip, 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 it's a different thing. It is our, it is our task actually um, to um, it will not die out because, uh, yeah, except for well, right now, we, it's very difficult, you know, because you need people, you need a live audience and you need to be connected. You, you're in the room, you're at the bar, you're at the table uh, and to um, keep it alive and uh, to keep the sophistication alive. I mean, now I'm jessing around, I'm losing my track here, but it doesn't matter because this is a live stream. Social interaction has changed because social media, the way people meet, the, 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 what people value and so on. So there is really a need of translation of this material into the, into the real world. And there is a huge gap because the technology shifted so much and the new generation of um, performers, they grow up with the social media stuff. But they have but, but so often, I, I, I realize this, we say, Jesus Christ, these kids have no social skills. They don't know shit about magic. But what they do with their hands is out of, is beyond, is out of the blue. It's it's like, I will never learn this. I've probably had, would have never learned it if I'm starting there right now, right? <laughs> so we got to meet, we got to meet together. And if it's, you know, if it's for the burden to say like, I, I give the skills to the kids because with what they do with their hands, this is going to be mind blowing magic. And we are already there. It's, my, it's not, it's not that it's not already happening, you know? But this is the this is the, gener the, the generation conflict we are in. And, and I was, I'm a, I was born in 75. So I'm Gen X. I'm just between the old farts and between the between the um, millennials and, and Gen Sets, you know, and um, and it's crazy, you know. It's like <laughs> I'm missing the good old days, you know, in the, where every, everybody was kind of, you know, not freaked out about shit and offended about every little piece of uh, information in a pub, you know, looking at this material. But on the other side, I'm so, en I envy this, this young generation with the drive, with the stuff, with the, got the medium. That they I've never thought that I'd live to see instruments. I don't even know what it is. You see this thing, they got this beep beep thing and then they make this music with it. 
What the fuck is this? It's an instrument. No, no, no shit. I feel, I feel like a real, sometimes like a real old man because it's, it's fast. It's moving fast, right? So, uh, gotta calm down here right now when I think about it. We are doing a little time traveling here, trying to figure out what this, what this has meant in this time when it was published. And then we try to translate it to our times. That's a challenge, right? So Peter Luska says, it's my hour, so I'm see you at the stream too. Wonderful, yes. Um, that's the hour. So um, <clears throat> I'm uh, giving her five minutes to finish the thoughts and then we, I gotta, we gotta keep it down. Gotta, gotta, we're gonna do this for one hour and, and that's that's the challenge. Tree Rob was born in 1977, Tibet was born in 1980. My brother was also born in 1980, so you're on the your borderline, you know? You, but you're, you're a millennial, right? You know that you're a millennial, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Flying V is 1974 and some people call me a boomer. Yeah, it happens, man. It happens. Dude, you got a Flying V as a, as a pig, man. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So. Okay, so I wrap this up at this point in a way saying that. What am I doing here? <clears throat> Among card control, there is the belief that the expert achieves his result by means of a, a prodigious skill that his method called for extraordinary application and tedious practice. The authors cannot stress too strongly that it requires no more practice to perform a slide correctly than to perform it badly. Where the expert shines is that he has gone through the hard work of thinking out the correct, met the correct method. He has exper experimented by the hour in searching for the easiest and best technique. For him, it is a labor of love, rewarded by the inner glow, which comes when at last he sees how the, to improve the slide or when he devises a clean cut method of a attaining a result re required in a given trick. It is this secret knowledge which makes him the craftsman he is. And I will just take this as the final words here. We are, uh, we are learning here um, with this little time travel working with this book to adapt, to modify, to think about why we choose what we choose and how we use what we use. So we will not just blindly now s learn slides or techniques, or we will make conscious decisions and we will up our game in the way we practice. So we will learn during this whole um, uh, sessions, the live sessions, how to max out our practice, how to make proper choices with, f f with what we want to work with and how we embed it into our material. And this is the great challenge and this is the great journey for this year. And I'm super excited doing this with you guys. And this is, I guess, this is what, what I um, wanted to say to wrap it up here for the first live session. And we don't have any time stress, really. I just want to show you, I just want to keep, I just wanted to, you know, um, uh, level myself uh, down right here. And it's so easy to, um, to pull it into the lengths. I just wanted to show you um, the roadmap here. We are going to... Um, talk about the double lift and double turnovers in two weeks. Then we're going to talk about the pass in four weeks. So it's every two weeks. Then we're going to expert shuffles, expert false cuts, and then we're going to talk about card changes. And this is about a three months pathway. I will upload 
in between, of course, what am I doing here? I will upload in between tutorials. We are in the middle of our table work uh, series. So we just covered the uh, table riffle shuffle. And now in the next session, I'm going to uh, show you how to do a false double undercut on the table. So we're going into false cutting. And, um, and I'm going to show you uh, some very nice table productions and some card controls on the table. And this is the, the, the entry point. This is what I deem as the absolute necessary basic fundamental stuff for the cards. And from there, you can go cherry pick with the material in this book. And you can also um, uh, go nuts uh, on an expert uh, uh, um, at the card table if you care. Or you can go back to Royal Road to Card Magic and um, rework um, the material, which is always good, which is also time worth spending. You will find all the links necessary in the info cards and info box down below. Also two affiliated links, one to the book on Amazon. I need three qualified purchases to keep to stay to stay in the Amazon program. I hope I make it this time. <laughs> and um, also, of course, a link to the web browser, Brave browser, which you definitely should try. And I would really, really um, enjoy uh, meeting you again in two weeks in the live stream. And maybe you got the book then and you prepped yourself. You read the chapter on the double lift, double turnover, and then you have will um, have a much better understanding of what's going on. And isn't that a great offer? I mean, you read the chapter and then you tune in and you get a deck of cartels. You practice. I'm going to read a bit, a little bit about it. I'm going to um, uh, distract the most important aspects. I'm going to share my, my insights, my thoughts on it. And you're going to have a super rich time with it. Because um, I saw here somebody write something about the double lift. Um, somebody wrote that the, 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 the double lift chapter was uh, somehow, I don't know, weird or strange. And I, um, yes, and I um, decided to start with the double lift, double turnover, just because it's such an important fundamental um, slide one of the specific slides which you just need um, to get into your hands at your fingertips. And uh, also it's really highly requested here on the platform still, you know, everybody's searching for the per perfect double lift. Um, I'm gonna show you my um, adaptation of the double lift that is um, we're, we're introduced here, but also I, I, I tell you what I don't like about it and why I wouldn't recommend using the, for example, the, um, uh, uh, the get ready in this book, right? But we're going to talk about this next week. It has been a blast. I've been super excited. And you see, I haven't been coughing here now um, because I have a, I know how to use my voice. I'm just speaking here. It's not in the throat anymore, but I still feel it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now everything is on YouTube. We'll be here. Can't wait. The stream was so short and I missed the old streams. XD. Yep. It's gonna be all right. You get used to it, and then um, you know you have something f to look forward to, and then you have something to prepare yourself also for forward to. And it's it's also, no, it's just not the, the technical issue with the algorithm. And I'm trying also, you know, to grow my channel here a little bit. But it's also um, you're getting more more and more responsible for yourselves, guys. You know, <laughs> so uh, so you don't need me every week, right? Um, you can do it on your own for one week. So, uh, she wrapped like, ich bin jetzt erst richtig warm. Awe, um, I'm practicing the double lift with the whole uh, last month at least 50 times a day. Amazing. Uh, Sebastian Hensel, that's great. So, 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 so. Let me see, did I forget anything? We got currently 12 views. We had a peak of 20 people watching today. That was great. Um, and I had a blast of time. My uh, boys and girls, you know the drill? You keep practicing and you practice well and it will come to you. And in the meantime, rest assured, more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. Ciao. Odd Mario's magic. I get subscribed.